Okay, climate journalism that works between knowledge and impact. And Lars already mentioned that actually this is what we as journalists should care about, the impact of what we're doing. Way too long, we've just looked at the journalism and what we found was working, but we never really checked, was it really working with our audiences? So this is really an important part yet. So next slide, please. Yeah, climate journalism is not optional, and I guess you've you've talked about climate journalism at this conference, so that's nothing new for you. Um, but you might want to need some arguments when you have to convince people who are not convinced yet. It's not optional. Climate change is the largest predictable risk humankind is facing. There are other risks. There are risks of uh, war. There there are risks or risks uh, any any kinds of risks. But but this is really predictable and it's journalism's mission really and it's responsibility to to inform people to make some to help them making sound decisions for them their children and their communities also by giving them perspectives really how to play a part in this next slide please yeah this this news report uh, that, that I did together with two colleagues, uh, both affiliated with with the Reuters Institute, uh, with in with uh, institutions in Oxford, also, is about how to craft journalism uh, uh, about climate change that resonates with people, that has an impact, and includes really practical case studies. If you want to look into it, and actually you can download it for free. It's it's really for free for for everyone. It includes case studies. It includes interviews. It includes lists of resources, useful resources to institutions, uh, literature recommendations, all kinds of things. So it's very applied, very practical. We did this for media leaders, for journalists, and for communication professionals, uh, just to help everyone understand what are the mechanisms behind climate communications. And the sources were 40, 40, uh, more than 40 interviews um, that we did. And we obviously drew on the latest evidence, the latest research about what works. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, next. I was too slow. <laughs> okay, key findings. One finding, uh, really, it's late. The media has only started to tackle journalism, and it could have done so 30 years ago. To be honest, I got a PhD in political science about 30 years ago uh, on environmental policy. Many of the issues have already were already there. Um, there were significant international reports. So this has been going on for decades, but the media is really late uh, to the game. And I don't want to waste time to discuss why that is, but that will also be a little bit discussed in the report. There's too much doom and gloom and too little focus on explanations and solutions. And obviously, there's reason for really negativity, for, for alarming news, for, you know, covering disasters, whatever. But uh, what the point is, it, this makes people really feel helpless in, in the face of the challenge. And, and you want to really help people to feel empowered. Next point, facts alone don't help. The messenger is often more important than the message because very often people need to see someone they trust. This is actually the single most important thing to motivate humans to do something is when their peers do something. You compare yourself with what your neighbors do, your professional peers, whatever. If they do something, you feel more inclined to do something. So it's really very often the messenger is really important and carefully look who you who you have the the, the message to 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 send there are too many silos in newsrooms very often in, in the newsrooms that i know they have a climate correspondent or an environmental correspondent they have had this correspondent or that's a noise issue yeah. Very often they had this correspondent for many years, um, but they felt they feel like, oh, you know, this is this person's job. It's not our job, and that's not true. You have to need uh, you have to need to break up silos and make it part of all beats. 
basic climate literacy in the newsroom is really a requirement. It's, it's a must. Everyone needs to understand a few facts about climate change. And we have a glossary in the report that, that says, like, here are all the facts that every journalist needs to know, not only the environmental correspondent. There's no one-size-fits-all model. And I mean, you spent the conference discussing that there is no one-size-fits-all model, uh, I'm sure. And the media, that's the last point. The media has a hard time living to their own standards in sustainability. Very often they say, oh, others have to act, others have to do this, companies have to become more sustainable, but what about the media organizations themselves? Next slide. Yeah, and this is really a uh, very important, and and I wanted to to uh, to to present this quote by by Matt Winning. We have to make content for people. We don't make content for Matt Winning. We did an interview with him. He's actually a stand-up comedian. He's an environmental economist. He does climate comedy, and and that's what he says. Like we, there's so much content around, and maybe there's not enough content around where you work. But he says it's it's very often. Uh, it just hits the point. It, it it misses the target because it's it's not really crafted with the the iron impact. And he wants to make people laugh. And when people have you know when when they laugh, when there's humor involved, very often people uh, get much more to reflection than than way than when they when they feel they have to read very complicated stuff that they don't really feel this is speaking to them. Um, yeah. Next. And, and this is, uh, I, I, I believe you, you listened to, to Enoch yesterday on the panel, at least he was, he was on, on, the, on a, uh, the agenda when, when I read it. Uh, I interviewed Enoch and he was, he was kind enough to talk to me about, about uh, climate coverage in, in South Africa. And he says, you know, this is in, in the report also, climate change is poorly reported in South Africa and it follows conferences, events, disasters. Uh, it's it's and media coverage has grown to be around controversies and I, I assure you this is not only in South Africa I guess this is all over the world default journalism we have to get beyond that default journalism that's one of the findings of the report next please yeah, this is, uh, here are five recommendations for climate journalism with impact. I asked uh, I asked Professor Maxwell Boykoff from the University of Colorado. Uh, he's he's leading the, the Environmental uh, uh, Communications um, Institute for Environmental, sorry, I forgot the right title of his institute. Like, you know, tell me what's, what does research say? What kind of journalism has an impact? And, and he told me these five things, and this is what I actually carried through uh, from the very start of doing the research because I found it so convincing. He said stories that focus on the here and now are really impactful. Stories with local context when people don't feel this is a far away story but when they feel this is this affects me, this affects my community. Uh, so really bringing it home. Also when there's no natural disaster just happened yesterday. Stories that emphasize the benefits of change. Very often it's all about, as I said, doom and gloom, and it's it's uh, terrible. We have to, this doesn't work, and this person did something wrong. But, you know, just painting a picture of a future that we might want to live in with more, maybe more, more prosperity, cleaner air, better health conditions, um, less diseases are uh, really you should emphasize the positive benefits of of uh, climate of, of of policies that that fight uh, climate change. Number four are stories where people find agency and and uh, find solutions where they really don't feel like oh god I'm a victim of this disaster, but where they feel I can actually do something here. Um, yeah, and and you talked a lot about audiences apparently in the in the course of this conference. Uh, that's what I gathered from from Lars. Approach different audiences differently. That is really um, that that is really very important to target audiences and meet them where they are. And even if it's with humor, as I said. Next, please. Yeah, what we did as case studies, and I just pulled out three just to show you uh, what kind of case studies there are. Um, one of the very convincing one I found was with the Norwegian uh, TV because they really developed a climate strategy. And I just, just uh, did a screenshot here. They have paramount principles for content and all that news, the newsrooms, the journalists have to have to really uh, 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 do, do act uh, according to these principles. So this is really the first newsroom I found in, in the course of my research that had a climate strategy. 
Um, Deutsche Welle, you might be familiar with Deutsche Welle formats because Deutsche Welle uh, is broadcasting all over the world. They have a they have a, a, interesting formats for young people that are very popular with young people, particularly this Planet A thing, very uh, practical, very applied, um, and and really very popular. Uh, formats about what actually you can do and how the climate uh, catastrophe hits hits home. Um, yeah, and so they are very successful with that one. And then the third one I wanted to pull out is AFP, Agence France Presse, the news agency. They, they really recreated their whole newsroom structure and founded the future of the Planet Hub. They merged the business department with the science and environment department. And uh, so they are they are now really covering business and the economy uh, in, in with, with a view on, on the climate and on the environment, which I found uh, really, uh, yeah, uh, forward looking. Thank you, next. Yeah, Wolfgang Blau, who is one of the pioneers in studying uh, climate climate journalism. Uh, he's not a pioneer, but he just spent a year, two years at the Reuters Institute as a visiting fellow and uh, talked to many media leaders all over the world also. And he says, this is interesting. This is exciting journalism, journalism because we are looking at the biggest reconstruction story since World War II, which is obviously a quote that applies um, more to the European setting, uh, where, where I am from, I'm German, um, and, and obviously uh, World War II did a lot to, uh, Germany did a lot uh, and, 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 and had to rebuild uh, the economy after, after the World War. So this is what he said, biggest reconstruction since, since World War II. Next, please. Yeah. Uh, if you are uh, thinking about a climate strategy and you can download the report, uh, I won't go through all the questions, but this is also very practical. Here are seven questions to check your climate strategy. Have you really figured out what kind of climate uh, what your organization's place is in the climate coverage. If you are a large organization, you might feel more responsibility. If you're a very small organization, um, you know, then there are only certain things you can do. So, so you can use these questions and, and really uh, that help you def define a climate strategy, help you guide through your uh, climate journalism. Um, have, have you you know, have you have you defined what success should look like and how you measure it? Have you a training concept? All these useful questions are in in the report, and you can use it to develop your climate strategy. Um, next, please. Yeah, uh, and, and another point that is uh, that is the editor in chief of Deutsche Welle, uh, Manuela Caspar Claridge, and uh, she said really. Uh, so her uh, climate coverage plays a huge role in all the journalism they commission. And she says the side effect is, or an important effect, is that it's really a draw for talent. Because she says, you know, when people apply for a job with Deutsche Welle, that young people, they are so invested in climate uh, change and, and, and doing something against it. And when they see that Deutsche Welle is investing in climate journalism, they say, oh, I want to work there. I really want to work there. And, and journalism has a talent problem. Problem, at least the, where I where I'm from, where I work uh, in in our setting, um, and so it might be a draw for young people to, who really are invested in climate change. Next, please. Yeah, and in the end, and this is the conclusion of the report. Really, um, if you invest in climate journalism, which is very complicated to tackle, it's very challenging. It's not easy because. You know, journalism is a day-to-day -day business. It's very event-driven, but here you have to come up with, you know, solutions for something that's slow-moving, for something that is complicated, for something that might not be really that easy kind of journalism. If you really manage to do that, this will help all your journalism to get better. And that's the major conclusion of the report. All of journalism could profit from great climate journalism because you will learn how to become constructive and solutions oriented instead of you know, focusing on controversies and, and risks. 
um, you can train or you can learn how to focus on what has been done instead of what has been said. Too much journalism today is still of the, you know, he said, she said variety. But this is really very, very important, focusing on facts. You can come become more creative in finding formats that work with different audiences because you will see whether something works or not. And you can experiment with these climate journalism formats. You can adopt a learning mindset and really reflect, you know, uh, what is actually, what are the latest insights of communication uh, science, for example, and how, how does communication resonate with people? What kind of communication, what kind of journalism uh, do people really uh, consume and what kind of uh, journalism has an impact? And also, which is very, very important for journalism with my like 30 years of experience in newsrooms and journalism, this will help you replace gut feeling with the strategic thinking because climate journalism needs a strategy. Yeah, next, please. Yeah, and, and really not to forget about that. Um, I always tend to emphasize the constructive part, the solutions oriented part, but obviously climate journalism is also about in investigating and holding power to account and that's therefore this is an important point uh you shouldn't forget and this is really something we need to struggle uh, for that media freedom is essential for climate journalism to thrive because this is about not only uh constructive positive news but also it it is about inconvenient uh truth and and your media uh, needs media freedom is important and climate journalists need all the help they can get they need protection in their newsrooms because sometimes this is very controversial what they're doing so really helping media freedom uh, to, to thrive is also essential next and I want to conclude with something that Nanette Brown from the United Nations uh, said um, she she runs the the communications campaigns of the United Nations and the UN is obviously also sometimes they can be very very alarming on climate change but but Nanette said still in the end we want to hook people on hope and not on fear so there is fear around but fear makes you freeze but hope makes you active hope is needed to have an impact um, yeah and. Then the next, you can, uh, the, the, yeah, this, this is, these are my colleagues, Catherine Dunn from the Oxford Climate Journalism Network and Felix Simon from Oxford Internet Institute. And um, the next slide, uh, if, you, if you want to download the report, you can obviously go to the EBU side, um, but you can also download it from, and I believe this also works digitally, uh, download it from this QR code. Um, Thank you.